There are programs around the world, international corporations are modifying our weather all the time, and they're modifying it in ways that cover thousands and thousands of square miles. Most of it is chemically altered, so that what happens is that we are putting chemicals, ground-based chemicals that are shot into the air, or chemicals coming from airplanes that change and modify our weather. This is Craig's job firing chemicals into the clouds in a controversial attempt to modify the weather. According to the World Meteorological Organization, 52 countries have a weather modification program. It's raining! <laughs> That's unbelievable! Oh. NASA's playing God! It's making its own weather. Project Cirrus, a massive operation jointly conducted in 1947 with the General Electric Laboratory, the Office of Naval Research, the U.S. Weather Bureau, the U.S. Army Signal Corps, and the Air Force. They were talking about climate change yesterday, and now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. That's right. Lasers now could one day manipulate rain and lightning. This facility was built by the Air Force about 20 years ago. Uh, to study the ionosphere, to, to do active experiments in the ionosphere. The ionosphere is a layer uh, that surrounds the, surrounds the Earth at about 100 kilometers up to maybe uh, 2,000 kilometers. It's important for a lot of things like satellite communication. Any, any kind of radio signals that pass through the ionosphere are affected by the ionosphere. Each of these trailers you see around me have uh, transmitters in them. The transmitters feed power from the main building over there up into these, into these dipole antennas. And basically, there are 180, uh, 180 antennas uh, radiating uh, high-frequency waves up in the ionosphere. It's a, it's, it's a big ham radio, a big HF radio, the, the biggest in the world. Fundamentally, what this is about is, is taking the ionosphere at, at 100 kilometers up, up and turning it into a laboratory. We can do experiments. We, we can create bubbles. We can heat small sections. We can create waves. We can, we can excite uh, plasma resonances and do a lot of experiments. We can, we can transmit signals all around the world. We can, we can study the effects of the ionosphere. It, it basically makes the ionosphere a laboratory. And, do, and we can do experiments that no one else can do. It's a, it's a laboratory without walls. They are the ones that are doing this kind of nonsense. So really, they want to blame humanity, but the establishment are the ones that are doing it. So Dr. Agnew experienced the power of ELF waves firsthand back in the 1980s. He was hired by an energy company to locate oil and gas using the same kind of ELF waves at much lower frequencies to carry out his search. It's a process called Earth tomography. But during one particular incident, Dr. Agnew believes his use of harp-like ELF waves accidentally triggered an earthquake. If 3.6 million watts of ELF waves were purposely or accidentally aimed at an already unstable fault line, it could, according to Dr. Agnew, cause a tremendous earthquake. And the reason ice floats is that water has a peculiar property of being at the greatest density at four degrees centigrade. And I have a little blue iceberg here that I'm going to float in a volume of water. Nearly overflow up, capsize the iceberg. Okay, settle down. I'm going to fill this up to nearly overflowing. If the ice melts, the volume does not increase of the ice water combination and so none of the water will spill out and that makes sense if you realize that as the water melts its density increases because it's turning back into liquid water okay so here the ice is gone and we've got no spillage whatsoever Companies are destroying, you know, places like Congo just for the sake of, of getting uh, the, the mineral 
that is used for cell phones and electronics. So really the establishment, the companies are destroying this world. So that's really who is doing all this kind of thing. So again, do not be fooled, okay? This is exactly what they are doing, but they like to blame humanity as if humanity is the problem. But we are not the problem. It is the establishment, the Illuminati, Jesuit, Kazarian, uh, Zionists, whatever you want to call them, they are the ones that are, that are causing the problem. They are the true cancer in this world, this new world order system that is coming. We know that they use the Hegelian dialectic of thesis, antithesis, and solution to bring about their desired changes upon society in ways which would seem natural and without suspicion to the ignorant and unobservant eye. In 1968, the Club of Rome met at Rockefeller's private estate in Bellagio, Italy. This think tank's job was to invent a crisis which would have a programmed response, to which they would then offer their pre-planned and long-awaited solution. This is how they bring order out of chaos, or as they love to call it, ordo ab chaos. Their purpose was to find a way to unite humanity in a common cause, and the catalyst for this unity would need to be an artificially created disaster of global scope and with global consequences. They came up with the idea of climate change. The Club of Rome claimed, we are facing an imminent, catastrophic, ecological collapse and our only hope is to transform humanity into a global interdep interdependent sustainable society based on respect and reverence for the earth they believe humanity is the cancer and in order to heal earth needs to purge herself of this disease overpopulation is said to be the cause of all earth's current ills and woes on 22nd of April 1970, Earth Day was first celebrated, harnessing the anti-war, anti-authoritarian and anti-religious feelings of the Vietnam protesters and redirecting their rage and energy into a new cause to fight for, a new enemy to stand against and a new religion to believe in, that of Mother Earth. In 1972, the Club of Rome published Limits to Growth, the Plan for Sustainable Development and the Remedy for Overpopulation. Voluntary sterilization, abortion and euthanasia are culling means they hope people will, through re-education and brainwashing, choose for themselves. Vaccinations, weather modification, 5G and frequency technologies are a part of this hidden, nefarious plan of silent weapons warfare on the people of this earth. People will be moved from rural areas to large, smart cities for the sake of better control and monitoring. Urban life will be sold as green and eco-friendly, and fires and droughts and hurricanes will force people to make this move voluntarily. Maurice Strong and Mikhail Gorbachev, both co-authors of the Earth Charter and Agenda 21, have called for the collapse of industrialized society and the end of national sovereignty. Gorbachev stated, My hope is that this charter will be a kind of Ten Commandments. The Georgia Guidestones are just what he was talking about. Built in 1979 on a hill in Alberton, Georgia, they were commissioned and paid for by an anonymous donor who used the pseudonym R.C. Christian. They are 21 meter tall granite stone slabs with guides or commandments written on them in eight different languages. They call for a new world order and a new world religion. Their prevailing theme is unity against climate destruction and the need to reduce the world population to 500 million people. Pope Francis has lent his hand to this fight. In his Save the Earth letter, he wrote that the Earth, our sister, our mother, is in a crisis because of our harm to her, inflicted through our greed, materialism and consumerism. He called for swift action and change of lifestyles, while the earth cries and the poor suffer. He claimed that the environment crisis was a moral and ethical imperative. Let us know also. 
that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first.